Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone attending and listening to the great program um, that, that we have at National Poultry Show. Um, so today I'm talking about um, uh, different uh, welfare concepts and especially as it relates to um, in environmental enrichment. So when I talk about these critical um, welfare concepts, there's kind of two major areas. One where we look at what's called the five freedoms. Um, and you can see those on the screen here. And then the other areas where we look at different elements of animal welfare, whether it's from biological function to uh, emotional state in terms of absence of pain or ability to express certain normal behaviors. When we're talking about environmental enrichments specifically, which is what I'm gonna focus on today, we'll be focusing on um, the emotional state, so absence from pain or chronic fear, as well as ability to express certain normal behaviors. And from the five freedom side, focusing on freedom to express, express behaviors that promote well-being. So one of the behaviors that we commonly think of when we think of poultry is this pecking behavior. And I've had it described by um, Dr. Alexander Harlander in a way that I find really interesting is you can think of the beak of the bird and it doesn't matter whether we're talking layers, turkeys, broilers, breeders, almost like the hand of the bird. So they'll use that beak to inspect and to peck at their general surroundings. The challenge becomes is when this pecking, which is generally something that birds will, will do, becomes negative or something that is repetitive and becomes a problem or damaging. So this can turn into an injurious behavior where the birds will peck at and eventually re remove or uh, consume other feathers, which then leads to other problems such as plumage or skin damage. And again, this is thought to be this redirected pecking behavior that stems from frustration or lack of foraging and feeding opportunities. So kind of coming from the concept of this barren or, or empty, so to speak, environment. Often it's associated with layers and broiler breeders, but as I looked more into it, this is it, with turkeys, you can have pecking aggression or just aggression in general. And in broilers, there can be general aggression, but not necessarily um, pecking, just, just based on the ages. And I'm oversimplifying it for this presentation, but it really is a multifactorial issue, which requires multifactorial management approach. So when I talk about environmental enrichment, what do I mean? It's a modification of the environment which supports an increase in the animal's behavioral possibilities that can lead to improvement in biological function. So basically helping that animal to express these natural behaviors. And in order for an environmental uh, enrichment to work, you want it to be effective. So biologically relevant to the animal that you're going to be working with, but at the same time, you also want it to be um, successful. So it has to be able to help that animal show a species specific um, behavior. But on the other side, for the person who's going to be using it, it has to be able to pr be practical um, to use. So when we're talking about different poultry, we have to be able to understand some of the different behaviors that these poultry have. And then ultimately, how does this relate back to the environmental enrichment itself. So first I wanna look at layers because they're generally the ones we think of when we think of pecking. Um, and it's important to look at these behaviors that different housing systems, so layers, whether you're talking pullets or layers, uh, anywhere on that lifespan, different housing systems showcase different behaviors. And how that pullet is raised based on this housing system will impact the life of that bird and the behaviors of that bird. And I think it's interesting is when we look at foraging behavior specifically um, with layers, it's something that starts within the first week. And in some cases in research, what's been found is if there's no access to foraging materials, this positive behavior may actually turn negative um, and damaging by four weeks of age, as early as four weeks of age. And then in adult layers, from some work that was done um, in Canada, uh, with the references below, it's looking at something like feather pecking can affect a wide range from anywhere as little as eight to 65% of flocks. 
And within that flock, you can have a range of birds that can be impacted. And this will depend on internal and external factors. This would be different or some differences in terms of behavior when we think of broiler breeders. Both generally lay eggs when we look at our females, but broiler breeders have some added stresses. Um, a broiler breeder will generally go from the pullet stage in a flat housing style system to the breeder barn where it's almost a 3D system where they're jumping on and off slats. But you have added stresses from navigating this new environment, interactions between males and females, male competition, and then the added piece here, which is feed restriction, which means this is linked with behaviors suggesting frustration, boredom, or hunger. Whereas on the meat bird side, we have turkeys. And again, turkeys, you're ranging from young birds in the brooding barn to older birds in the growing barn. But it's interesting when you look at pecking behaviors, um, you can see negative pecking uh, increase with age, but it's possible to see this as early as one to two weeks of age. And then if you're dealing with older males, um, you can certainly run into pecking and aggression. On the other side, we have broilers. And with broilers, um, it's important to understand that these are young birds. So they're only there for a certain amount of time. And young bird behavior is certainly going to be different than our older bird behavior that are there for weeks at a time. So generally with young birds, we're looking at behaviors like play and overall general use of space. Um, so play isn't necessarily critical to survival, um, but it is important and could be things like um, sparring or other activities of running down the barn with wings flapping, such as frolicking. In terms of aggression in broilers, broilers are not um, cannibalistic in the same way that a breeder would be, for an example, and they're generally less aggressive than other poultry, but you can still notice aggression, which can depend on the environment that they're in, how many birds are there, and then also how old that broiler is. So how do these different behaviors relate when we talk to enrichment? or environmental enrichment specifically. There's a couple of commonalities to look at. Um, in all, when I was looking, looking around at, at the information, early access to enrichment has a positive impact throughout the life. So the early it's brought on, this is something that can be a positive impact for the birds throughout their entire life. But in terms of what, what enrichments are used and, and how they're chosen, this is something that can certainly be chosen by the bird. They generally like things that are new um, and there has to be some sort of positive feedback. So the bird keeps coming back um, and this ultimately helps to discourage negative behavior. If we think about layers specifically, again, enrichments need to be um, uh, useful depending on the different housing systems that they could be in. What may work in a conventional system may be completely different for an aviary and anywhere in between. Um, but different enrichments, whether it's foraging style enrichments, um, dust bathing uh, enrichments or others, were associated with a decrease in um, uh, feather pecking. Um, generally foraging was something that has a positive impact there. In the broiler breeder world, again, we're looking to teach these young birds to, uh, to learn the 3D space that they'll get into in the uh, breeder barn. So that's an important piece to put in. But at the same time, we have to remember these birds are feed restricted, which means they're always going to be looking for something. So something more towards foraging or other distractions, whether it's dust bathing, could also have positive um, impacts and help to decrease some of these negative behaviors. Whereas in other cases, there is going to be a lot of competition um, between those birds. So it, objects that can help to um, help within the space to help reduce uh, male competition specifically have been noted to be positive. Again, this being different from turkeys, turkeys were thinking of young birds as well as our older birds, but we also have to take in consideration the size and the body, uh, the size and the body conformation of these birds. And for these enrichments, it can quite depend because um, turkeys will generally be attracted to the enrichment. Um, so we also don't want to set up situations with, with piling or, or anything to, to that effect. 
And again, towards broilers, our younger birds, um, when we talk about play behaviors, um, for some work that's been done, there's no direct relation with enrichment and play, but the enrichment may have encourage other positive behaviors. So with broilers, we also have to be able to think about um, their size and body conformation. So if you're thinking of perching, you want to make sure that you're taking into consideration the size of that bird. A small perch um, may not be as good as something where it's a, a, a flatter slat, for example. And then in terms of kind of going back to the general concept of the environmental enrichments, remember that for these enrichments, we want them to be practical and provide more than one opportunity to complete multiple behaviors in that production system. And then in terms of just general field experience from, from some of these, it's important to realize it's going to be unique on a per breed basis, an age basis, as well as um, sometimes even per flock, because it may depend on the behavior of that flock, the temperament, and, and so on. And again, uh, birds may get used to the enrichment, so it's possible that you may need to change the positions, elevate it, hang it, um, whatever works in that particular system with the enrichment that, that you're using. Um, could be as simple as if it's on the floor, then you might need to place something underneath it for contrast. Um, and again, put it in areas which have higher activity, um, so you're not encouraging birds um, in the case of layers, for example, um, to nest up beside it. And again, there's so many other things on this list. Um, this is by no means uh, an exhaustive summary, but just a general idea. And in terms of an example of a foraging block, um, this is what we at Alltech have called Chick Peck. And this is a, uh, a block that features palatable and uh, is palatable um, qualities with grains, um, which allows for this positive reward to be able to remove um, these pieces and grains, but also very durable um, to help with that beak, beak blunting. And it supports foraging to help divert that um, poultry's instinctive pecking behavior, but at the same time um, helps when it comes to uh, allowing that bird to perch on the block. So here's uh, just a couple of examples of the birds perching as well as pecking at the block. And in breeders, what we can see um, when the block is just placed, the birds will come up to the block, which then attracts more, and then they'll eventually go out um, and more birds will come and try. So there's interaction with it. In terms of broilers, what we're seeing in broilers really supporting the natural behavior of the bird with birds perching, as well as we do get some pecking and just being around um, that, that block. So at the end of the day, in terms of the take home messages, we have to remember that injurious pecking is thought to be redirected um, pecking behavior. Um, but this is a multifactorial issue, which requires a multifactorial uh, approach. And environmental enrichment can be a part of this. And when we're thinking about all poultry in general, there can be some similar as well as different behaviors. So with that, I'll say thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy um, to answer them if you contact me directly via email.